the Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. Hello and welcome back to the Potty Plotters Plotcast. I'm Elaine. And I'm Julia. And, and together, together we, we are, are the Potty, Potty Plotters. Plotters. And don't forget, you can get in touch with us at any time via our social media channels, which are, Julia? It's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Potty Plotters. Or our website, pottyplotters.uk. Or email us naughty corner at pottyplotters.uk well done we got through the hardest bit that we ever struggle with <laughs> know, normally, whenever it's scripted that's <laughs> us in trouble so we're at episode nine and we're here in the polytunnel today because it's a bit nippy again outside so we're doing this from the polytunnel and we've had a message from Anne to say she listens to us just before she's going to bed which uh, is that flattery i don't know I'm not sure are we sending her to sleep <laughs> what's happening there but uh, Why don't we ask the listeners to get in contact with us and tell us where they're listening from, Elaine? That's a good idea, because no doubt somebody will be in a different place that we've never even thought of. We know that Kev Plot 2 is listening to us on his tractor. As he's driving by. Well, welcome to episode nine. If it is that you've not heard of us before... Where have you been? Exactly. Where have you been? Because we've been here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it feels like we have been for a few weeks. But nevertheless, today we're going to be talking a meat and two veg. What's that all about, Julia? Oh, goodness knows, you write these titles. <laughs> I know, I do, I know. <laughs> and I did wonder what I'm doing, but nevertheless, a meat is not M E A T. Which is a good a... job because I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, I know I want no meat no, no, in no. this. No, 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 we'll do a meat. And the meat today is actually with Will Murray. And Will Murray was a winner at Chelsea, Silver Gilt. And he's got his own business. And we want to know how he's going on since we last met him. We were drawn to his uh, show garden, weren't we? Because it was all about veg, really. Yeah. Which is quite unusual for Chelsea. Yeah. And he looked a bit frightened and we thought, oh, he needs a bit of comforting. Definitely. So we scared him. And we will talk to him in a little while. Before we get to that, let's look at the veg. Now, I've chosen these veg to talk about simply because they're the most common veg that you find on your plate when you go to a restaurant or a pub. It's always carrots and peas. And you know I have an aversion to peas. I hate them. But they always seem to want to put them on my plate. My mother did till I was 52 and I told her I didn't like them. Until then, they went on every week, come what may. So... You know that I do want to burst into song now I've said come what may, but I won't. Instead, we'll just carry on talking and this time we'll talk about peas. Yeah, so we're going to get you to talk about peas because you hate them so much. We're going to get you to plant the peas because you hate them so much. (laughs) It doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is I am going to plant them even though I hate them so much because my husband and family adore peas and they're very, very simple to do. Now, what I want to explain to folk is that you don't have to have an allotment. You don't have to have a garden even. You can plant these in pots. They're very, very simple to do and they're worthwhile because I think, from what I'm led to believe, fresh peas is nothing like them. They're very easy, so let's do some. I'm going to do, in front of me, I've got some called half pint. And half pint are a specific type of pea that you can plant in a big plant pot, in a big bucket, in a wheelbarrow, it doesn't matter. They will only grow 18 inches in height. They don't need any support, nothing. So easy to get pop along to the garden center or anywhere that sells seeds and you can get them from there and the peas that as i say have got in front of me half pint peas themselves these hard ones julia are they any bigger or smaller than the ones you eat um they are the same size as the ones you eat so the smaller you harvest them the sweeter they are generally if you let them go too long they'll really fatten up in the pod and they tend to go a bit um i don't know flowery and tough i suppose okay so i wouldn't leave them pick them early and have smaller ones rather than like leave them on if they if i leave them on and they've gone too far i just tag them so that i can save them for later on so just tie a little bit of a ribbon or something around them and i know then that i can use them for saving Okay, right, well, these in front of me, as I say, are called half pint, and these are going to go into some barrels on the allotments. I'm not going to put them in the plot itself, and I've got a cell tray in front of me, and the cell tray itself has got nine cells. They're not particularly big, but in each of the cells, I've got multi-purpose compost. I'm patting it down. You can't hear it because, for a change, I'm being quiet. 
not like you. I is know. It? It's quite a shock, but I am patting them down because peas like a hard bed. Do they? Yeah, they do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you were doing this outside, make sure that you've stamped the ground down firm and then all you're going to do is you're going to pop the pea seeds on top of the multi-purpose compost, but not in a row and not one per cell. What I've done... Henry Purcell was a musician, wasn't he, of some sort? doesn't matter, Julia. That must go back a long way, I don't know. (laughs) Just talk to myself. (laughs) So, all I've done is I've put five in each of the cell holes and I've arranged them in the same way as a five on the face of a dice. Do you get me? I do, actually. Right, there's first. (laughs) So, all I'm doing now is I've put them in and I'm covering up with multi-purpose compost and I've put just a thin layer on the top and again I'm patting it down because they like a firm bedding on top of them as well. Very nice and you can get uh, peas that grow for quite a long season can't you? You can get different varieties that will grow and really again it's looking at the seed packet because some will grow uh, probably two three feet whereas another variety that you grow for your husband grows taller than you which is Virtually impossible, really, but (laughs) it's true. It is, and they're called aldermen. And aldermen are lovely peas. They're lovely to grow. They can grow eight to nine foot. So I actually grow those up twigs and baboos and nets as well. But the birds generally leave those alone. But these are a different matter, and I have had them stolen before by pigeons. So when they get to the stage that we'll plant them out, we'll talk about pests and diseases and how to protect your peas. Yeah. One common thing that we do see people plant it when they're planting them on the allotment, especially new people, we do see them planting them just one pea at a time. And really, that's not going to be very productive, is it? No. And uh, it's wrong to do it that way because peas are a happy family. They like to be planted in families and that's what these are going to be. So each of these cells has got five peas and each five then will be planted into the soil altogether. I'll not be splitting them. But as I say, when we get to that stage in a few weeks' time, because these will take a few weeks to get going, probably two weeks after that I've wet them and put them in the greenhouse with the broad beans just to keep them away from the mice Mm -hmm. I need to make sure that they can't get at them because they'll just eat them all yeah because we've had a few mice related incidents where I've actually been blamed haven't I Elaine can you remember (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, I do remember. And you've obviously been scarred for that, Julia. But uh, yes, that was unfortunate, but it is worth protecting all of your seeds from rodents or Julia. The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. Julia, carrots. Tell us all about them. So I've got a couple of packets of carrots. I'm not going to plant them while we're doing this because we've got no ground in front of us. And I want to plant these directly into the ground. Uh, Some people will plant them in big tubs like the old dolly tubs and use them in in the barrels. And that's really good. But I am going to be planting mine in the ground. And a seed packet with carrots in, depending on what variety, because you can get varieties that will see you the whole season through. So again, look at the the kind of planting times on the packet because you will have them right the way through until about Christmas time depending on variety so I've got a nice early variety here some uh, Chantenay red and these are quite a stumpy variety so they don't take as long to grow because they're a shorter carrot and I'll be planting these on my plot into the ground now the area I'm going to plant them in is my no dig beds because I know that they've got a nice easy run to grow and they're not going to have to fight any big clumps of soil or any stones or anything like that that's going to distort them and it's not been heavily fertilized that will make them fork so they will go there but if you are a digger and you want to plant them somewhere on your plot you need to incorporate a lot of sand into the area where you are going to plant your carrots so as I say we've got different varieties and it's one thing that people always seem to want to be able to grow is carrots and one of the hardest things they they find to grow is a carrot but really it's all about conditions and protecting them from the carrot fly but you've never seen one have you no I've never seen a no. carrot fly, only when I chucked one at you once, didn't I? Yeah. When we were in the polytunnel, I said, that is a carrot fly. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's fair to say it's one of those things that you never see, but 
I think that carrots are one of the hardest vegetables to grow successfully without any damage from any pests on an allotment. Yeah. Yeah, and it's one of those uh, vegetables that you can get a lot of comedy out of if you go wrong because they do like to mate together if you uh, if you over sow them and if they come into contact with anything, they will send out shoots everywhere. So if you want a nice straight carrot, you've really got to put the effort into creating the right conditions for them to grow in. But as I say, I'll be planting them directly onto my plot, onto the no-dig area, but the most important thing is to cover them. And I'm going to be covering them with EnviroMesh. And that is the only thing that will stop the carrot fly. But if people want to plant them and they're doing them in tubs or in a raised yeah. bed, um, you can leave off the EnviroMesh, but you, sh you need to be planting at least 18 inches high off the ground because apparently carrot fly can't, uh, can't get any higher than that. But I don't believe that, Elaine. No, I don't either. But what I would advocate is that the taller the tub, whatever you're going to be putting them in, make sure that they are at least 18. I'd go for 24 inches. I would. And one thing that is recommended is that you thin them out, the carrots, the seedlings, when in, in the evening because yeah. they give off a, quite a strong scent. Yeah, they do. And yeah. if the carrot fly picks up on that scent, they will hone in on your carrots and they will bore holes and they'll ruin your carrots. Now, it is something that people like to have a go at growing and it is something, because you get a thousand seeds in the packet, you people do tend to over sow them and so they're very heavily planted so if you're new to growing carrots one thing that I recommended to a new plot holder down here was the seed tape and the seed tape all it is is a tape with the seeds impregnated in the tape at regular intervals so it saves you having to do the thinnings which a, it saves you a lot of bending down, but B, it doesn't give the carrot fly the opportunity to get a whiff of the carrots when, you, when you're thinning them out. So as a new beginner, or if you sow them with kids who are very heavy handed when they're sowing seeds, I would recommend a seed tape. Contact the Potty Plotters anytime on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Potty Plotters or email naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk. What have we been up to this week, Elaine? Well, I don't know about you, but honestly, I've been so busy. I have been sorting out all of my seeds, but most importantly, I've been finishing off getting all my structures sorted. So I've been painting the side of my shed. That needed doing. And also I've been mulching um, around my raised beds as well. So I'm all ready. Oh, what have you been mulching with? Um, I've actually had a conifer that's been taken down and that's been mulched. So now I've put it all over the path and it will certainly uh, suppress any of the weeds. But it's great to walk on. The smell is absolutely divine. And I've been going around the plot, anybody who's been asking me, just pruning their last of their apple and pear trees. Um, it, it's probably getting a bit late now to be doing it, so I've just been uh, tidying up and chopping back on the uh, fruit trees. And all I would say on that, Julia, is if they've got any twigs that they don't want to use, keep them because they are perfect for when we start to plant our peas, which will be very soon. So we need those twigs for them to be able to scramble up and also protect them from the pigeons. Well, that's a good idea. Oh, now this is getting exciting, Elaine. People are contacting us. Um, we've had a message from Dorothy Rose regarding episode three, and she's saying, well done. That's fab, Elaine and Julia. And thank you to Jill for your lovely story. And well done. That's beautiful. Well, thanks for getting in touch. That's smashing. And anybody else wants to, don't forget, you can get in touch with us by any means, evidently by Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, at Potty Plotters, or our website, pottyplotters.uk, or email... You can't get a word in, Julia. <laughs> no, it's no, me. This is all about me. <laughs> <laughs> or email naughty corner at pottyplotters.uk. The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. So for the next half of this episode, we're going to be talking to Will Murray from It Will Grow, who we had a chat to last year at RHS Chelsea. Uh, poor man was terrified and scarred, but he agreed to talk to us again and we were delighted. So uh, we want to find out how he has been growing and what he's getting up to now. The idea is it's the containers and uh, balconies section at Chelsea, which is a new category um, that year. So um, it was just really, it, mine was a balcony garden. So it was, uh, the idea was to show people that you can do a bit more on a balcony or in a small garden, not just what you, a couple of 
plants in a little pot on a sad, sad pot on the side you can you could grow veg if you wanted you can do all sorts so it's just an idea of sort of giving people different ideas of what they could achieve did that garden go anywhere or did you eat it i ate it i ate most of it yeah so very it got sort of got split apart into into little different different bits so i had a few things my neighbors had a had a few of the planters and things that wouldn't fit so uh didn't go didn't go too far afield but um yeah i've got the apple tree in my garden still so i can have a look at look out and see that <laughs> there was the grapevine as well if my memory serves me right together with the golden spade what did you do with the golden spade actually it's sitting in a client's garden at the moment where i've left it behind but um hopefully it's still safe so <laughs> should be sitting in my shed <laughs> <laughs> you're using it you're using it to work with well yeah it's really good a sharp lovely sharp point it's perfect <laughs> now you did get a silver gilt award yes. so you'd have got your medal and you'd have also got a certificate um most importantly you did get a i've been had by the potty plotters badge i did we had it around somewhere i, I saw it yeah. the well, i think that's the wrong answer actually will <laughs> i think that's the wrong answer and we'll have yeah. to edit that little bit yes <laughs> Yes, I wear it every day. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done with all three of your awards? Well, you don't actually get a you don't get a physical medal from Chelsea oh. unless you get a gold, and you what well, and they give you one. Um, but um, I think you can buy it, but I didn't. Um, I didn't mm. buy the actual medal. So um, get my. I've got my little um, card um, just in the office, basically by my desk. <laughs> And, and was it doing Chelsea? Has it really been a career launcher for you? Has it got you an awful lot more clients? Or I think it. I think it helps. I don't think that um, people don't suddenly come like a, the rush after Chelsea because I think um, I'm not sure that that many people go to Chelsea specifically looking to nab a garden designer. But it certainly <laughs> helps on my website that I can say a Chelsea award winner when people drop by it it definitely helps in that respect i think what was the most memorable part of chelsea for you besides meeting us obviously um but you know there were so many people there thousands of people what was the most memorable bit the whole experience was just in incredibly sort of overwhelming but the whole scale of it sort of and because it was a little garden and i sort of entered and not didn't really expect to get chosen sort of doing it on my own with a team of me and a few friends helping out so uh not your normal Chelsea Garden huge team so it, the scale of it was quite sort of incredible the um the press day was amazing and um, that was a weird experience of just chatting to loads of random famous people coming around to the garden <laughs> talking about gardens so that was quite uh that was definitely memorable what made you decide to do it, Will? Was there, were you sat around the pub with your friends when you say your friends helped you with the, with the garden? Did you sit down the pub and just say, oh, go on then, let's do Chelsea? I just saw that it was... Um, so I, I launched the business in 2021, so not very long ago. And at the end of 2021, I sort of just saw that I would be eligible for this new category at Chelsea. So I sort of applied very last minute in the last few days that it was available and... Um, just as a bit of practice, really, because I didn't think I'd ever get chosen. So uh, <laughs> and I didn't hear anything. And about a month later, um, I found out that I had been chosen or the garden had been chosen. So, um, yeah, it was sort of uh, it wasn't particularly planned as such. Of, I'm going to enter Chelsea. It was more of a, oh, I could do this for a bit of practice. <laughs> So we see so much of it on the telly and, and BBC, they have it on for almost a week and sometimes twice nightly, twice daily. If you had a magic wand, what would you actually change at Chelsea? Um, I think, and it's probably a, the the thing that comes up quite a lot, is that it's it's quite a sort of, the access to Chelsea, it's sort of a really privileged thing that it's all, it's this, it's full of money isn't it and that sort of um the tickets are obviously expensive it's the gardens are expensive that's one of the things i think is good about the the new categories is that they are trying to make it a bit more perhaps a bit more realistic so you, you want those gardens that are incredible and kind of unbelievable and amazing spectacles that's what you go and see but it's nice to go and see a garden that you think 
oh, I could have that. I could. My gardens are my gardens are ten square meter balcony as well. I could, I could build that. <laughs> do you know all the Latin names for all of the plants? So when I'm specifying plants, I do use the Latin names because the problem is that there's a lot of plants share common names, which is really unhelpful. So um, as a as sort of as sort of inaccessible as the Latin names look, they do have a purpose in that you know exactly which plant you're talking about. <laughs> have you ever made any orb? I haven't, but there's some good ones that sound like they're made up and the rude ones are quite fun. So when I was learning from my exams, you can, they're the ones that you remember. And I was like, I'm definitely going to get that one as one of my example plants. <laughs> so, well, can I ask you, what's the highlight of your career? Because I've looked at your website and you've obviously done Chelsea, but I also read that you designed something for Lady Gaga. Now, what's, what's <laughs> you know, your highlight there? I've had a few. Well, I had, a yeah, I've worn a few different caps for, <laughs> for my jobs and things. <laughs> that I didn't design stuff for Lady Gaga. I worked as part of like the, the team um, creating <laughs> outfits for her. So it was a, a really bizarre quite that was a bizarre experience but Chelsea was um Chelsea was yeah the main the main thing for me because it's it's sort of my baby and it was that design was was the thing I created so uh it was yeah it was mine <laughs> so that was yeah that would definitely be the highlight do you actually think that winning the way that you did because it was a bit of a clean sweep really wasn't it at Chelsea how do you think it's actually pushed you forward to the person that you are today it's definitely one of those things of of, I, I think about it quite a lot that I might not have applied or it was just to sort of how different things could be if I didn't apply. So it's sort of that thing of giving something a go and you never know what's going to happen. So I think that sort of, it's definitely made me a bit more ambitious of what's achievable and what I can go on and do in the future, definitely. One thing that drew, drew us obviously to your balcony garden was the fact that it was full of edibles. So yeah. the, the gardens that you're now designing for people, do you always fit an edible in there somewhere? I try to a lot of unfortunately a lot of people come and quite often um ask for low maintenance gardens and sometimes they don't wow. think that uh, <laughs> which which is probably not correct on their behalf but they don't always think that that's uh, that fits in with with their ideas but I try and sort of push people away from the idea of a of a garden and ev garden ever being low maintenance but um, <laughs> if you were to give any any tips what would be the one tip that you would give to people who maybe wanted to grow their own or just wanted to do their garden oh i think um just, just don't be scared of or don't, and don't be scared of failure it doesn't really matter if you if you get a pack of seed and for 199 it doesn't work like what's the worst what's the worst that's happened just give it a go so i'm always telling people well, I, had, I was talking to someone today who was really worried about the the state of her garden and i said well it's the middle of winter of course it doesn't look perfect it's that's just the way it is so i'd say yeah just give it a go don't worry don't worry too much about it <laughs> and um my last question for you is have you ever waxed your amaryllis <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Wasn't <laughs> <It's> everyone? <laughs> uh, oh dear! Well, she did it live on air. <laughs> 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 uh, this is one that I waxed earlier and it's not everybody that's been to see it so um, I thought I'd take this opportunity and show you that well, it's, it's very impressively smooth so you've done a, you've done a very good job <laughs> <laughs> it smells nice setting new trends <laughs> I think this could make Chelsea this year 2023 how to wax your own amaryllis and where to stick it don't you think <laughs> well, I, I, I'll leave it up to my imagination. I won't ask where it's been. So, are you enjoying life after uh, after Chelsea? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, good. good. It's very, yeah, I've been like I've been fairly busy, so it's I'm not doing any shows this year. I don't think yet, yet planned. So that's probably a good thing. <laughs> what about talks? Because you'd be really good at it. Oh uh, yeah, I don't mind doing that sort of thing. I've not I've not really ever looked into it. Thanks again to Will and to you as well for listening. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed what you've heard, press that subscribe or follow button, whatever it is, just press it and that way you'll never miss another exciting episode. In the next episode, though, we will be talking football. Now, I know that most people will be very shocked, but yes, it's football. And we're also going to talk about amazing tomato tricks. Is there a link there?
I don't know, it could get messy. Football and tomatoes. Messy into your player. <laughs> We'll see what you did there. <laughs> Most people will, actually, Julia, evidently, if they listen to either one of us. <laughs> anyway, it's bye for now, and if you want to know any more, you'll just have to, uh, well, you'll just have to wait anyway, because uh, we've run out of stuff to talk yeah. about. Yeah, so contact Alan Titchmarsh. He knows the things <laughs> He does, actually, yeah, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. I did, actually, I met him once. In fact, I think I've met him twice now. We ambushed him, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Remember. Yeah, I like Alan. Yeah, he's a nice chap. The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters is an Amberland Media Production.